October 16th, 2019, 1.28 a.m. another sleepless night. I'm not usually this bad, but stress is through the roof. I haven't been at work for almost a month. Pain's still not under control. And by the way, this is going to be a long meandering video, so if you're not like a doctor or a lawyer or workers comp or any of that you probably don't want to watch this still for three weeks ago I had a real bad patch at work I was scheduled Thursday through Sunday Thursday I only made it a couple hours I think I left early that was absolutely stupid Getting out of the car, I got wicked pain on the left side, which is not normal. Doubled over, still in there. Punched in at 10.01. Went to the bathroom twice. Repeatedly got pain on the left side that had me doubling over. It's now 11.30 and I'm leaving. I'm in a lot of fucking pain. The entirety of my lower back. All the way across both sides, down my right leg. My right knee is going crazy. out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday thinking I had an intermittent leave of absence, which that paperwork was dropped off in August. If it was Monday or Tuesday, which I was scheduled off, I got a letter saying it was denied. I didn't have enough, I didn't work enough hours in the prior 12 months, which is 1,250 because I've been on light duty and, um, this would have been my third consecutive intermittent leave of absence. For reference, the initial day I got hurt was February 6, 2016. Three years. Eight months. And change ago I've been doing everything I can to keep working even reduced hours four hours at the <clears throat> I don't remember what when the date was that my hours have changed but it's basically four four hour days down from 40 hours before I got hurt. I've been grinning and bearing it as much as possible, but as time goes on, it gets hard, it got harder and harder. I've been taking Extamsa which is a uh, slow release Percocet <clears throat> for a while. Two pills a day, take one in the morning, one in the evening. That wasn't cutting it, that was a switch from, this is just the most recent stuff, but that was a switch from uh, Vicodin. That wasn't enough, so then they added regular Percocet for breakthrough pain. 
I think it was two pills at first, now I'm at three pills. Um, before the Vicodin, I was taking Percocet. Also, I take three ibuprofens, three six hundreds a day, two uh, Scalaxin, which is a muscle relaxer, and I'm, I've also been using lidoderm patches for I don't know how long. I've also been relying heavily on heating pads. At this point, my back is discolored. My pain is primarily low back on the right side. It travels down my right leg quite often. Walking is an issue, standing is an issue, driving is an issue, sitting is an issue, laying down wrong is an issue. I've been very fed up with this whole system and the fact that it's just dragging on indefinitely. My benefits would expire roughly in November 2022 when I'm just supposed to keep doing the same thing. It got to a point where going to work was just going to subject myself to ridiculous pain. There were days it wasn't ridiculous, but some days I'd be doubling over. Um, just sharp pain that stops you in your tracks and you'd just double over. Other days when your back and leg hurt so much that you don't want to walk to the men's room. Just grin and bear it. So I'll just keep doing it. Prop yourself up. Put yourself into this little cubicle area. Where there's a file cabinet, the wall, and the other desk. And just kind of try to unload the spine a little bit while you're standing there. Because it's too busy to go sit down. Or you go sit down and the other people there don't know what to do. So they come and grab you. I've been telling the treating the treating physician at long term pain management you know how it's been going, what's been going on. Every month I go for my med check and every month I give the report and it's like, Well, let's give it another month and then we can try and adjust and this and that and this and that and it's I took two weeks of vacation in the summer. I drove an uh, hour, hour and a half north, which is, mm. but I had the opportunity to stay at a, a cottage. Um, it wasn't going to cost anything, and so I took my girlfriend and my mother, and we went up. I was in agony most of the time. I was trying to just float in Lake Winnipesaukee on pool noodles, and I was in pain just floating. I haven't been in work for like three weeks. Just about four weeks. And the pain still isn't under control. So let's go back to um, a month ago. Just gonna round off. <clears throat> when I got my denial letter, I asked Human Resources what my options were because my attendance is horrible. My restrictions are, like, ridiculous. There's no way you could really be expected to be there, in my opinion, and do the job and follow the restrictions. So anyway, I get the denial letter, I come up, I say, well, what are my options? And just take a medical leave. Okay, well, how do I do that? Well, you just tell us you need a medical leave. That's it, it doesn't make sense. 
No, oh, that's it. And we can we can predate it. Um, which probably means the twentieth was a Friday. But at any rate, I was like, okay, I call workers' comp, and it was one of the miraculous few times when I actually got to talk to the uh, claims adjuster. And try to confirm that all I do is tell Home Depot and I'm okay and my benefits are good, my check is good. Yeah, that's it. You're all set. Don't worry about it. Okay. I also call the doctor's office, long-term pain care. They don't like doing paperwork. Some paperwork. They don't like making adjustments to stuff. The intermittent leave paperwork, yeah, okay, no problem. Give us a hundred bucks. I really don't have a hundred bucks, but I need the paperwork. <laughs> no, it was turned down, so the paperwork was useless. Anyway. Before I dropped the paperwork off, I called and I left a message and I said what I needed, what I was doing, and I asked, will you be able to fill out this paperwork? Because I know they don't want to make changes. The answer I got was, I don't know, I need to see the paperwork first. Okay, fine, fair enough. Maybe she didn't get the correct message. Drop off the paperwork, give it a couple of days, you know. I, I think that's fair, it was like the end of the week, I think. But whatever, you know, you don't, I don't expect them to I'll jump right to it. Call them up just to see if they're going to be able to do the paperwork. It's leave a message. It's pretty much what it always is. Don't hear anything. Screw up <clears throat> when I call to verify, to double check. Um... They have multiple offices. Didn't have pen and paper when I called. Um, and by the time I was home, I don't even know what the hell I was doing. I don't know if we ran to the, the supermarket or whatever, uh, which my girlfriend usually goes in and does the shopping. And... I missed it. Okay, I blew it. So I called. That was a Friday. I called Monday morning. No, not morning. I always waited. I don't call first thing on a Monday morning. I, <laughs> I, I know things can get screwed up because of, you know, Monday morning headaches and things going wrong and a bunch of crap, a bunch of messages on the weekend. Leave a message. Now, typically... I'll hear back. Sometimes it can take a couple days, but I'll hear back. Never heard back. I was like, well... I don't want to keep hounding people. I'm a person that there it is. I left you a message. When you get to it, please call me. Call again. I think it was the following Monday. Nothing. The following week, I had an appointment. I go to the appointment. We do, uh, you know, hi, how are you? How's the meds? Like, you know, and I said specifically, she she brought up the whole paperwork thing. She didn't understand it because it was pretty much identical to what she had already filled out. And you know, I told her since I've been a how's it going? Since I've been out of work, I'm surprised I'm still having a lot of pain. And she says, "Well, it'll probably take you time to get adjusted." Not thinking. It's early in the morning. My pain meds take a while to kick in. 
and I don't sleep very good most of the time, so the brain's not functioning right. And she's like, well, ask, ask them what they need because it, it, something's not making sense. So, I don't know why I delayed calling, but I figured out what I needed, and I called back on a Friday, and I left a message. I think the appointment was a Wednesday. I don't really know why. Probably frustration, but, you know, when you communicate with people, you think everything's kosher. Uh -huh. You think everything is okay. Come on. Light up. Using a monitor for light. And say or they need a note saying um is that you know, um, to take me out of work. I get a call back. Like, oh no, we can't do that. We can't make those changes. Uh, and this would be going back to the 20th when I dropped the f couple days after I dropped the paperwork. Around the, th what was it? I don't even remember when the date that I went out and when I dropped the paperwork off. It would have been a couple days after because of the when I called, they predated it. Oh no, I can't do that. I didn't say it. you didn't have to go to work. Time sensitive paperwork. Three weeks to say no when I said what the paperwork was before, before I even took it in. So that's pain management. Let's backtrack a week. My comp check usually comes on a Monday. It's every two weeks. Um, my male hair is not great. Comes late. As usual, no check. And I had another question because two months ago, it was suggested I go see counseling for depression has related to all of this and my adjuster n never really gave me a straight answer would dance around it would say oh, I have to send it off to the nurses for review so I called her to see what the status was and she actually answered the phone instead of me just leaving a message and not hearing anything and they said, no, they need another opinion before they say, yes, they're going to cover, cover me going to counseling. I said, my check didn't show up. Is there is something wrong? Now I'm nervous because of this, this whole medical leave deal. Thinking I'm good and then no check and I'm not getting answers from people. She says, let me look. And, you know, you hear the don't know what she was doing she says yeah you're fine it was probably just a hiccup in the mail or something it happens it's there's been a, the occasion when my check didn't show up till wednesday okay it's happened in the past i'll take your word for it um wednesday i get a letter Wednesday, this will be the day of my appointment. I got a letter saying they need me to go for another independent medical evaluation. I have a different guy's name on it. And 
Uh, at this time, we respectfully request you make an appointment as soon as possible with your treating provider to be assessed for possible permanency related to your workers. Uh, comp injury, you may be entitled to additional benefits. Actually, I got this letter on the Monday before I had my appointment. When I went to the appointment, this letter came up, and she's, the pain doctor said, no, we don't do that here. Um, and usually there's multiple forms. You'll be charged like probably two to three hundred dollars, and we won't be able to do a complete. Have them set up the appointment. Um, and, you know, they don't want to deal with it. Okay, so I call the guy on this letter. Say, no, they don't do it. They want me to have you set it up somewhere else. Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, like, every person I spoke to, I'm like, wait, they charge you what? They charge you $100 to do paperwork? Yeah. And I said, by the way, my check still hasn't come yet. Is there a problem with my check? Now, he's not fully up to speed, so I'll give him a little... I, I'm assuming he says he's not fully up to speed. I'll give you a little credit. I will give people the benefit of the doubt at first. I basically give people a rope and let them hang themselves. He says... Yeah, for some reason it wasn't sent out. Let me send a let me send a message. They seem like they use instant messenger or that type of a system. Um, and it should go out. Usually takes three business days. Okay, Friday rolls around. Friday afternoon, no check. I call them back just to see if there's a problem. Voicemail. Typical. Okay, fine, whatever. I tried again later, but I'm pretty sure they leave, he leaves at 4 because I've not been able to get him after 4 o'clock. And when I've talked to him close to then, he said he would be in touch the following day. So, okay, here we go. Monday rolls around. What the hell is going on? Well, I, so I wasn't up to speed. And I did some digging and for for some reason, we have absolutely zero information for you from Home Depot. It's like it just stopped on the 20th. What the f***? So I'm calling and this and that. And today I find out that the person at Home Depot, oops, I wasn't going to say, <laughs> didn't. They put in for a leave, but they didn't put in as workers' comp. But this is all related to my back injury. Now, why I have to jump through all these hoops? Because I got hurt on the job. It's beyond me. So, the person I spoke with today adjusted it. I was also supposed to have that paperwork in today. She says, I, we have to ask you for it because you're in the state of New Hampshire. You're technically not required. We, I can't make you give me the paperwork. And, you know, I said what was going on with comp. She says, that's not right. You should have been getting a check all along. Blah, 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 blah. I call workers comp and I call him the guy that was trying to help out the main adjuster who <sighs> nothing not I'm bouncing I'm calling both phone numbers eventually I don't remember if he called a lot of the time if he answered or if he called me back I can't remember at this point after I got off the phone with Home Depot and said, they said they don't need any of this paperwork. I don't know how that affects you guys. I was told I can take a medical leave for two years and I, I don't even turn in paperwork. 
it seems odd. <clears throat> but as far as my job is concerned, yeah, you're all set. But no, workers' comp. Oh no, we need that. You need to have a doctor's note, or we don't pay you. Home Depot's policy is one thing. Liberty Mutual Workers' Comp is another thing. The state of New Hampshire, I have no f idea what they do. The lawyer I got back in January, I don't know what he does. I ask him questions, you know, is this how it's supposed to go? Well, uh, it doesn't really relate to the case. Great. Oh, he did tell me I'm going to be screwed. And the whole point of getting a lawyer is to just end the workers' comp aspect of it. Because I have permanent impairments. There's no way I'm getting a job and holding it. Because I can't do anything reliably. And these doctors still can't wrap their head around the fact that my pain's really not under control. Anyway, so then we start. How am I supposed to get a doctor's note when pain management won't do any doctor's notes? They kept me waiting for three weeks on time-sensitive material. I had them send me a list of other places to go because I just it feels like I'm nowhere with them other than here's your pills they have multiple offices between them and a couple of their doctors they come up repeatedly on this, this short list of places to go I go there, number one, because it's 15 minutes. Even that drive can be bad. Like when I went the other morning, it was really rough because it was early. And I take my exams at 7. It takes an hour for it to start to feel like it's doing anything. It can take till 9 before it's really helping much. So he's like, well, go here, call this one, call that one, go to your primary, do this, do that. I can't get in to see my primary care, even though, at first, even though it's workers' comp, because I have outstanding balance with them, because I don't have enough money coming in to cover every. I don't have enough to cover my basics. I had an appointment for noon, and then they said, no, I can't do it because of the, there's a block. It wouldn't let me then call billing. I call billing, and I wait, and I do this, and I wait, and I call that one. It's like, no, go this one, go that one. And then I end up back at Occupational Health, who I saw back in February of 2016 when this first happened. They're like, well, we referred you out. Why we can't really have you come back for the same thing? It's like you work your way through the system, but now I'm stuck in a place who can't do any fucking adjustments to my damn restrictions. Who won't take me out of work, no matter what I tell her is going on. So, my department at work is slightly separated from the rest of the place. It's easy for management MODs to avoid. Most of them do when I'm around. My immediate co-workers, after they, if it's somebody who's been there a while, they can look at my eyes and tell when I'm in a lot of pain. I try not to show it. They can tell. My new department head pretty much expects me to call out constantly. These people can see I'm in a lot of pain. Other people who have been there a while, outside of the department, but fairly close, 
will say things like, what the f*** are they going to do for you? How do you keep doing it? You're going to kill yourself or cripple yourself. Um, other comments, I would have killed myself a long time ago. How are you f***ing surviving? My neighbor's hair. I don't know how you do it. It's ridiculous what they're putting you through. You're going to end up in a wheelchair. Anybody who actually sees me at work or after work, and not just at a 15-minute med check, I don't have these long conversations with my neighbors. We say, hi, how are you? How's the you know, nice weather? How's it going? Things like that. Really, you know, civil, civil conversations. But generally short. They all know what's going on. They can all see most of the time I come home from work and I'm moving like a f***ing snail between the car and my house and I have assigned parking not far outside my front door. I'm on the first floor. I get a step from the parking lot, from the asphalt to the, to the cement, about this big. One step, two step, a little thing, and another step. I'm on the first floor. It can be agony going from my car to here. And then I end up laying on the floor for hours on end. And I keep telling doctors all this. Where's your main, where's the worst spot? I keep pointing to the same spot. And Well, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. And I've been in a lot of pain this whole while. You keep telling me, oh yeah, go to work. I keep going to work. And... I keep leaving work early. The only reason they haven't fired me for attendance is because I keep getting these intermittent leave of absence, and now I can't because I, I don't work enough hours. Then they tell me my option is to, to file a, a medical leave of absence, but they just completely f me on comp. They don't know. Home, human Resources has no idea how Comp works. Home, comp has no idea how Home Depot works. No doctor. Get this one. The, the adjuster at Comp says, well, go to one of the convenient MDs that does workers' comp and just see if they'll give you a doctor's note. I walk in there. She's like, no. We can't do that. We've never seen you before. We have to start a whole new claim. Oh, hell no, you're not. It's the same injury. It's an old injury. It's never been better. I've been through six, seven, eight, <clears throat> eight different spinal injections in L4, L3, L4, L4, L5, L5, S1. Um, I've had epidural. Some of the shots have made me pass out. None of them have made me better. A couple made me worse. Then I get transferred from the physiatrist locally out to the pain clinic and they want to do more injections i passed out they had to stop they pull me back in for another round it didn't help the only injection that ever helped me was a trigger point for the muscle spasms those helped anything into my spine no they go right through the sore spot with the needles and they make them passing out on the table When I first go to a physiatrist, oh, where, where's the worst of the spot? I point. He goes, wow, that's pretty specific. Yeah. That's what I've been saying since I fell. Three rounds of physical therapy. A first, first was a chiropractor. A couple of adjustments felt good. And then it just, something wasn't right. It was making it worse. So we stopped. Switched to physical therapy. Go see, I don't know what the hell. It's, one person says he's orthopedic, another one says he's um, neurosurgeon. Oh, uh, you're not surgical. Physical therapy. Okay, fine. That's why I came here in the first place. Six weeks, no improvement. Um, after my first visit, I couldn't get out of bed the next day. I, he, he's like, if you can make yourself get here, I can try and loosen you up. 
You do feel so bad. He crippled me. So we try this, we try that. He does dry needling. Nothing. No improvement. And I do my fucking exercises when I'm not there. I'm still doing some of the exercises that don't immediately kill me. <clears throat> the ones that kill me, I have to be very careful with. Then there was another round of physical therapy. No, after a few injections, it was physical therapy. Then we tried injections. Then the, we, well, let's try aqua therapy. Okay, fine. You're not supposed to feel pain in the pool. I felt pain in the pool. So they start trying to adjust what you're doing so you can do some stuff and hopefully work up to everything. You're not ready for this. Great. So we stop that. A while later, comp says, well, let's give you a referral someplace else. And I think I started this because I'm getting sick of not getting anywhere. Time is going on. My life is wasting away. I'm losing, slowly losing hours at work. And in the beginning, I was able to work enough that they didn't give me a check. That's why I still have like three years left of cash benefits because they don't give, they weren't giving me a check at first. One of the things that screwed me hard is for the 26 weeks leading up to you getting hurt, which is when they um, figure out how much they're going to pay you, I was making entry level for my, my position at the time, which is for what my position was, was uh, pathetic. So... <clears throat> Two months, month and a half, two months before I got hurt, I got a good raise. I'm like, no, I'm done with the stupidity here. And I said, you know, I'm going to go look, give them a heads up. I'm going to go look elsewhere, or you can give me more money. And they gave me more money. At this point, I make it $5 an hour. Just about $5 an hour more on light duty than it was back then. But it doesn't matter because I make more from, I get a bigger paycheck and I get less from workers' comp. I can't get ahead. So, the other round of physical therapy. It was, it was, it was physical therapy and they wanted to transition me into occupational therapy. Rest of the therapist is like, I can't put you in there. He goes, I'll kill you. And then, okay, orthopedics can't help you. Well, what the f***? Somebody's got to be able to help me. Spinal cord stimulator denied. What about back surgery? The benefits won't outweigh the risks. What about amputating my leg? Oh, you don't want to do that because you'll still have pain. Some more time goes by. Now, keep in mind, when I'm in therapy, it hurts. It fucks me up good. It takes me weeks, like beyond a month, six weeks or so, to recover and get back to a base level of pain. More time goes by. Well, let's try therapy. For the third time? Yeah, we, we want to send you to our own facility. It's completely one-on-one -on -one. it's very very gentle very specific they tailor it they do very little bit at a time to see what you can tolerate and after after i think it was the second visit i recorded i did a little vloggy thing at home for the next couple of days she made it a minute two minutes into it she says I can't treat you your pain is not being managed it's about 1140 after therapy it's two minutes up the road and everything's starting all mental well it slowly started to ramp up 
Stopped at Walmart. I waited in the car for her to run in for a gallon of milk. Return the inversion table to Dex. Uh, she ran another er quick errand while I was in the car. Came home. Tried ice. It felt like it brought an instant knot. And as I continued to use it, it turned into like this... It was like a very sharp, concentrated pain that wouldn't let up, so I stopped the ice. The moment I'm laying on the floor, and I have been for I don't know how long, with my feet up on a chair, and then I started getting all kinds of other pain, so now I'm laying here in the fetal position. And I'm never going to remember all this for the next session, so that's where I'm at. It's been a couple hours since I took a dose and a half of meds in an hour, well, of painkiller in an hour since I took um, ibuprofen. I had switched back to heat intermittently, and even sitting is just starting to get comfortable. I tried to get up and make a cup of coffee and just walk around the house a little bit, but my right leg was flaring like crazy. Um, what else? When I was on the floor, um, there was a distinct line of pain radiating down the back of my right thigh. It, it hits my knee, but it's just weird. It, like, spreads out. Uh, sitting in the chair, the pain shifts from my low back to my ankle, like, I guess about halfway down my shin, along the back, into my ankle, and into my heel. And I'm pretty much useless when I try to get up and do anything. Just after five, still dealing with the same stuff if I get up and try to be productive. Back is killing, right leg is killing, mostly below the knee. Into the foot. I didn't take a double pill at noon because I knew I'd be bumming around now and I only have a half to take now or I take a, half, a whole hour and a half later and I don't make it through the night but even with the whole pill I doubt I'm going to make it through the night sleeping and we're off. Friday morning just after 8. Last night was rough. Um, increased pain overall. Having a lot of issues with my right leg still. Even this morning, I just tried to do the um, the stretches and where I could, I had I had more flexibility yesterday, where there was like zero pain. Now it's just bringing my right knee up, my low back, um, all the way down my leg is is hurting more a lot more than usual um so pain is still elevated um my back kind of feels like it was tenderized a bit just from the little bit of massage that was done or deep tissue or whatever you call it pain levels are totally still elevated it's just afternoon take Kim to an appointment. Um, it's all right side. About halfway up my back, all the way down to my foot. I did notice some muscle spasm in my upper back this morning, a couple hours ago. Um, meds barely did much of anything in them. It was at 7, I took it, 9.30, 10 o'clock, it was wearing off, and I've been taking it easy still, it's just, I was trying to do a little walking around the house, and, um, got one of those nasty pains that, like, I don't know, somebody stabs you in the back, it makes you stop short, um, so, yeah, we're still elevated, blah, 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 we're still elevated, 
Friday, Friday night, about 20 after 9. Pain is still elevated. I haven't been able to do much of anything today. I sat a lot this afternoon. I had company. Um, trying to do a little odds and ends, but I can't get very far. At this point, I even got some crunchiness on my left side. I think I'm just hammering it too quick. And this is awkward, so I'm done. Saturday night, 6.30. Um, pain's still elevated, although not to the same extreme as it was yesterday. Uh, I can't do a whole lot before everything gets going again. Um, At the moment, it seems to be focused mostly in my low back as opposed to my back and my leg. So, I don't know, it's like a grindy, crunchy, unpleasant feeling. Monday morning, um, pain still elevated. It doesn't take much to get everything flaring. Um, my right side, low back, we the deep tissue or soft tissue was done very tender and I can still feel it even yesterday I just didn't feel like doing this update but anyway still elevated I'm gonna end up calling out of work oh that reminds me I left work early yesterday I made it like an hour hour and a half before I was done and that was a different day I called out too so it's going as expected she goes, and in, in the video I said, I don't know if it was deep tissue or soft tissue, and it's soft tissue. She corrected me. She says, I barely touched you, and you're in all this pain. She was like, we gotta stop. So now I'm sitting here, back, back at pain management, which I mean, I've been going all along. Well, let's try this med, let's try that med, let's try that. Keep pumping me full of fucking opiates to keep me working. How does that make sense? What about the opioid crisis? Opiates, muscle relaxers, and anti-inflammatories and lidoderm patches. Just keep pumping me full of that shit. Yeah, you're fine. Go work. What? the f*** is wrong with this system? Fast forward back to current day. I've spent the past two days trying to straighten this mess out. That a little communication weeks ago. I would have had something figured out weeks ago. I wouldn't have missed that pathetic check I get. I still have no resolution other than to get a note saying to go back to work and go <clears throat> and go right back to kill myself. It's tobacco, it's not marijuana. There's no vitamin E acetate in what I vape. I am drug tested regularly. I only take my prescriptions. I haven't had a drink since they started me on this fucking Percocet volume and all this Motrin. Um, prior to that, I would buy a six pack. I bought a six pack a year and usually three or four of those would get dumped because they got skunky. Every hoop they put in front of me, I jump through. When I ask for help, I get nothing. Well, maybe we'll give it another month that we can adjust your meds. You're pumping me full of drugs so I can go to work. The drugs hide the pain so I can do more to hurt myself more. What is wrong with this picture? I 
ask for help, you don't communicate for shit. Now I'm completely hosed. My car payment is six days late. My insurance is going to come out of my bank account automatically. So there's barely enough in there to cover that payment. Not that it will matter if my car gets repossessed. Don't get me stuck on my phone. That's overdue. I still have a credit on my light bill from getting help because I was going to get shut off last winter. My lights and my heat's electric. My hot water's electric. I keep trying to sell stuff. I don't have much left to sell. Before this happened, I was making a, an electric trike. That was a lot of fun. My girlfriend even got an e-bike so we could go ride together. I got I electrified the trike, the trike because of balance issues. Um, electric because she was on a mountain bike and had a hard time keeping up with her. Plus, you know, I like to do that stuff. I don't feel like I really do it anymore. That was October-ish. And February after that is when I got hurt. I tried taking it out once the following summer after therapy and injections. I didn't make her cross the parking lot. Then I started playing with, you know, looking at different seats, and I tried again. And now, not this past summer, but last summer, that wasn't working. She wasn't riding it, so I sold it. My kayaks, I used to kayak constantly. I co-founded a friggin' website. It's huge. Or it was. I don't even go there anymore. I can't. It's too frustrating. I can't kayak anymore. I tried this past summer. The kayak was sitting on the beach. All I had to do was get in it and try and paddle. I can't be active like I used to be without being in pain. I can take a Percocet and then go take a little walk. And I'll still be in pain while I'm walking. And then when the Percocet wears off, I'm fucked. I go to Telescope thinking, well, you know, it's you can set it up and you know, it keeps your mind busy. At least I'd rather go do something, but... Trying to set the thing up, it puts me in pain because you got to do all this weird shit trying to line things up. It's electric. Hook it up to your, your computer. Get that for sale. The only thing getting me out of the house now is a camera. That I'm probably going to have to fucking sell. I just sold two lenses today. Ain't going to cover anything. I'll cover some of the basic ex the basics. Forty five minutes I've been blabbing. <clears throat> this is my second cup of sleepy tea. brains and on overdrive because trying to figure all this out all this shit just got dumped on me nope nobody's giving you a no nope. we can't it's not ethical it's inappropriate you're being treated by them why don't they do it because they keep saying they don't do any of it
Sitting here is painful. I was laying down, other than my brain running a thousand miles an hour, it felt like there was a, something just clamped around my spine, my lower back. I'll be sitting there, and I'll feel like something stabbing my feet, the side of my foot. Pain shooting up your leg. Sometimes it's just, you feel this distinct line of pain. It just runs down, down the back of your leg. Kind of goes weird around the knee. I don't feel a lot in my calf, but then into my ankle and my foot. Usually it stops at my ankle. system in our country is fucked. I don't know if it varies by state, but... I hate being trapped in the house. I'll try to take a walk out back. I went to a festival downtown. I made myself go. Took a pill. Knew I was going to be walking too much. Um, Independence Festival. People dressed up in like, you know, colonial times. Colonial clothes and carrying muskets and firing cannons. And of course, there's all kinds of ways to blow money that I didn't have. I was jealous of people in mobility scooters. Can't afford one of them. And if I could, it, there's no way I'd get it in my car to take it anywhere. Don't have a hitch, I ain't hanging it off the back. Don't know how overdue my car is for an oil change. Front end's been making squaly noises for months. October 16th. It's about 7.30. I got about four hours of sleep. Got up about seven. Both of my lower legs, below my knee, just feels like this massive amounts of pressure. Put them up, put them down. Heat, no heat. It's, this is one of the things that puts me on the floor with my feet elevated. It's not always that. 